Hi, today we're going to be looking at praying for your partner and I'm going to show you four effective creative ways in which you can do this. close perimeter of a committed relationship can provide a really intimate and safe space in which to grow together, to come into new maturity and also to deepen your friendship. It was an extraordinary trigger to becoming more of what God created me to be, a safe place for healing and growth. However, that same close perimeter can be hard to live in when you both encounter darkness, rejection, despair and confusion. Loving each other through these challenging times can be difficult and the closeness and intimacy of a marriage means that it's in this space that we are real. It is here where we let off steam and where we offload. I'm going to share with you four creative ways which you can use to entwine the love of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit into your marriage on an ongoing basis. So the first one is to pray at all times, for all reasons and in all seasons. You want your prayer to be a little bit like a tennis match. Whatever comes at you, you bat it back with prayer. You get this ongoing rhythm of prayer in your life. It's like the consistent heartbeat of Christ in your union together. Scatter prayers into every corner of your lives and use this gift extravagantly. Here are some trigger moments I've learned to pray in. Crisis, bad news, illness, financial worries, lost or broken things, disagreement, disasters, prey, conflict, irritation, disagreement, hurt, prey, good news, special times, date night, excitement, relaxation, prey. You cannot pray too much. As a Christian, you have this extraordinary gift because you carry the Father's heart for your partner. Because of the Holy Spirit which dwells within us, we not only have our own human love to rely on, but we also have God's love too. To release this love into your union, get into the habit of thinking what God thinks of your partner and then pray that. You will find that this softens your love, it grounds your love and it transforms your love. A great way to remember this is to keep a photo of your loved one as they were as a young child in view. Here's a photo that I uh, keep in my bedroom. It's of me as a child and my husband as a child and there's us married in the middle. Sometimes I look at this and I see what God sees. I see a little boy that didn't smile very much a boy that lost his father far too early. But I see a sensitive boy, a deep thinker and a creative child. And I find that helps to ground my feelings and my thoughts and my understanding of my husband. The third way to pray is in a dynamic way. And I've got some matches here just to make us think of that. Sometimes when we pray, we need to take risks. We need to go outside the box. We need to light up something new. You see, you are in a privileged position. The intimate space and place created by a lifelong commitment means that you will see and understand this human in greater depth and light more than anyone else. This is why huge healing can happen within this three-chord relationship. That's right, marriage is like a three-corded rope, strong because God is entwined with us. 
I recall a time in my husband's life when he felt very dejected. He'd been pushing into songwriting and a trip abroad had left his hopes dashed and his dreams in shutters. And I just felt this rise of the Holy Spirit come up within me and I knew that God wanted to push out that disillusionment. And I remember praying for him and he was lying on the floor and literally rolling him around on the floor, praying that God would push out that tide of disillusionment and praying in the new, praying in that he would walk into his own calling in creativity and music, that he wouldn't be put into a box or try to feel he had to be like anybody else. And Pricegapes is a testament to that and to that dynamic, almost spirit-led prayer time. The fourth thing in terms of prayer is that nothing comes from nothing. If you have an idea, even the smallest idea, like a short note on a post-it note slapped into a briefcase, it is worth doing and it's important and it's significant. So whether it's a silent prayer as your partner sleeps, a let's run in the field and shout out our thanks to God, or a kiss on the cheek with a short prayer such as, I pray you might feel really loved today. Just do it. Try never to think of praying without following through. Be prayer. It truly is so powerfully real and life-giving. I know that sometimes praying together might be really hard. Maybe your partner has no faith or has lost their faith. Maybe there's been a rift in your love, or maybe it's just a time when neither of you feel so good and you feel too fragile to pray. Don't go these things alone. Talk to a friend, a family member or a church pastor. Allow them to take the weight for you and to pray for you and with you. It's so important that we feel cared for and looked after in our love. God loves us and he is with us by his Holy Spirit, however we are feeling. So, in terms of the prayer points today, there are four things that I've spoken about. The first one is to pray at all times, for all reasons and in all seasons, just like a tennis match, batting back whatever comes at you with prayer. The second thing is to have the Father's heart for your loved one. Allow God's love to fill your heart and to channel out through you for that person. The third thing is um, to sometimes pray in a dynamic way. Light a new fire, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in prayer. It may be that it's doing something you've never done and praying where you've never prayed before. That's okay, allow that to happen. And lastly, um, something's always better than nothing. So even a small post-it note or the smallest thing, it will be specific to your relationship, can really bless and keep your relationship going even in the hardest times. Well, I hope that has been useful today. If you're not subscribed to Prescapes, then please do. But until we meet again, may God hold you and your relationship in the palm of his hands.